Most people have a place they think of as home all their lives. But for some, home is not a place, it's a state of mind. Our passports say American, but we're really citizens of the world. We're the children of the American soldier. Our spiritual siblings are the military children of all countries. I was one of those children. My daddy was a general in the Air Force and both my grandfathers were military officers. It was a strange and interesting childhood. Cruel, magical, privileged, and painful all at the same time. About 5% of Americans belong to this subculture, a kind of invisible nation growing up on every continent except the Arctic Poles. They say we've shaped America's destiny with an influence far beyond our numbers. I know one thing for sure. My childhood has shaped me in ways I'm only beginning to understand. Where are you from? From? <laughs> um, I don't know. I was, I was born in San Francisco, and I, I kind of consider that my home, but I never lived there. I'm from everywhere. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm not. Living on base is such a sense of security. It's a little odd to have people walking down the street with rifles and M16s and, you know, but it's normal. That's their job. You wanted to try out for something? You could actually get in. Hi, this is Wolfman Jack on AFN Munich. The military is, is the only place in American society where black people and Hispanic people routinely boss around white people. In the military, on those bases, when I was there, zero tolerance for race and racism. Didn't matter what you thought, you could not act on it. The soldiers could go out, have their little riots and do everything like that, but it better not be in the school system. Of course, growing up military isn't all shiny and happy. With most of the military lifestyle, you got paid once a month. So you ate well on payday and got all the groceries, and then as it winded down, uh, the closer you got to payday, the less you had in the cupboard to eat. From date of detachment, it's usually around six months or so before a couple like yourselves would get housing. Look at it as an adventure. I learned fairly early on that anything that I did reflected directly back on my father and his career, especially his career. With these families, it's very hard in adulthood for the child to come to terms with what, what he or she grew up with. They can understand that they had to be sacrificed to some extent to further the greater good, namely the career of their father, the maintenance of their family, and the protection of the United States of America. And it's really quite noble when you think about it. Now. The other area is, how did this affect you as a human being? I remember going to the airport to pick my dad up. It was June of 1970. And my brother had long hair. I had long, frizzy hair. And I remember him kind of being, looking a little puzzled. And then it slowly dawned on him that he had come back to these kids who he didn't recognize. Dinner was a was dinner was not something I ever looked forward to because it was always the same thing. My dad would start drinking as soon as he got off work. By the time dinner had come around, he'd finished another bottle or two, falling literally his face into the meal, if not throwing up at the dinner table. I mean, this was so much a pattern. It was literally daily like this.
moved 17 times in the first 24 years of our marriage. 23 houses in 18 schools, mostly the United States, Europe, and um, Asia, Turkey, and the Middle East area. That was normal. So what, was, what would be odd would to live in the same small town for 18 years before you go to college. That would be strange. For some of us, returning home to America is more of a culture shock than living overseas. I was always out of sync with whatever was going on with the culture, the lessons, totally at odds with, with what should have been my peers, but they never felt like my peers. I counted up all the little doggy names one time that I could remember, and there were 21. We did not move with, with our dogs. I mean, I was picked in the eighth grade the most likable guy. I thought, man, this is going to be great. The high school is going to be wonderful. Then we moved. 